So yesterday we went over the whole evaluation things, you know, starring your images, kind of rating them, getting them in order, that sort of thing. Once you've done that, you're ready to make a contact sheet. For most of the assignments, when we've got like one image that's due, I'll ask, I'll ask you for a contact sheet that has 30 images on it, which should translate to about three pages, or two pages, no, three pages worth of prints. What you're going to do is you're going to take all the images that you want in your contact sheet, so I'll just do them all here. You're going to highlight one, then you're going to hold the shift key, and you're going to go to the last one in the group that you want, and you're going to um, click with the shift key held down. Now you can see that it says all 31 items are selected. Now, so that's one more than I wanted. So I'm going to go here and find one of the ones that I don't like. And I'm going to hold the command key down, not the shift key, but the command key down. And I'm going to deselect that image. And I could do, uh, you know, a couple if I really wanted to. Um, but you're going to have 30 images in a contact sheet. Once these are highlighted, what you can do, and there's two ways to do this, probably there's three, but there's two ways that are immediately visible. Well, the one is right here, you can see this little page with an arrow. You can say output, and you'll see it says output to web or PDF. You also see that right over here, it says output as well. So it's pretty obvious. Um, so you're just going to click the output button, and what it's going to do is it's going to change the screen on you for a, in a second here. Okay, so now it's showing all the 30 items I've selected. It now shows them here. We're in kind of a new window. And over here, it's showing me the output and what's going to be happening. So first thing is I want to make sure that PDF is selected. We don't want to do a web gallery. This is kind of cool that it does web galleries. However, it just as an aside, when it does web galleries, it does them as a flash gallery. Flash galleries are cool, but you don't, you can't view flash galleries on a um, iPod or an iPad or anything like that. Flash is kind of on its, it's on its way out. It's gone. It's done. People don't use flash anymore for the most part. Um, so you, if you're building a website as a photographer, you probably don't want to use this. They, it has its benefits, don't get me wrong, but you probably don't want to use this, just as an aside. So we're going to choose a PDF. And the first thing you want to do is, uh, see, if I remember correctly, the default international paper. So you're going to go here and you're going to change it to US and you're going to make sure it's set to letter size. Okay, that's pretty common sense. You just want to go through all these. Um, and then you can choose the quality. The quality that we want is always going to be at 300 pixels per inch. That's the standard quality. That's basically that magic number at which things are photographic. And we'll go over that 300 pixels per inch a little bit more in detail later uh, in a different lesson. Quality can stay at 70%. Background stay at white, please, so we're not wasting any ink. Um, you don't need passwords for this. Um, then we're going to go down here, and we're going to go image placement. And uh, across first by row, so it's going to go one, two, three across, and then skip to the next row and go one, uh, you know, four, five, six, and so on and so forth. You want three columns, one, two, three, and you want four rows per page. That's going to give you 12 images on a page. And that will work really well for us. That's going to be the best between size and conserving ink. Be big enough that I can see your images and look at them, but they won't, there'll be enough per page that we're not wasting a ton of ink, if that makes any sense. So um, <clears throat> then what you can do is you can go up here and you can hit refresh preview. Because right now you don't have a preview. It hasn't built one for you yet. So you just hit the refresh preview button, and what it's going to do is it's going to build a basically a preview of the PDF for you right here. So it takes a second, and there you go. You can see what it's going to look like. If there's any glaring inconsistencies or any major problems, you can change it. You really can't go to the next page. You just basically see the first page. But 
it gives you a sense of what's going to happen. You'll see that the images basically have their names. So and I always like to have that here um, where it says overlays. I always like to have the file name there okay, and the extension so that I can see if it's a .jpeg or a .cr2, which is camera raw, or, or anything like that. Do not hit rotate for best fit. What that'll do is that'll take and it will spin these to 90 degrees so that you can pack more in. We don't want to do that because then I have to be turning my head every time I see a vertical image or something like that. So just leave it be. Don't, don't worry about that. Repeat one photo per page. No, don't do that. That's a waste. So then we're going to get down here. And then I like to add a header. So you're going to check this. Put it in the center and put your name there. What that's going to do is very small. You can see here, there it is. It's going to put your name right at the top. This is a great help to me because you're going to hand me these and then I'm going to forget whose photographs they are, whatever. Well, it's got your name at the top. It's very handy. Um, you don't have to be all fancy with the font and stuff. Um, if it helps you, which it might for me, at the bottom, you could put your, the project there. Okay? But I don't think that's necessary. Now, once you've kind of got a, uh, it all set up and you like what you've got, you're going to go and you're going to click Save. What you do not want is you do not want this. View PDF after Save. You don't want that. And the reason for that is actually kind of silly. If you click this, it's going to open up your PDF immediately in a program called Adobe Acrobat, which normally would be a great thing, but not here. For some reason, Adobe Acrobat crashes on these Macs constantly. And it has crashed for, I don't know, four or five years. Updates to new versions of the software don't change. I'm not exactly sure what's wrong with it why it crashes, but it does. We've looked at it, we can't figure it out. So you don't want it to open. We're going to open it manually. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click Save. Now what you should do is you should put this in the same folder as the rest of the photographs. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to find my the photographs that I uh, had here. So there they are. And I'm just going to name this Contact Sheet. Now what I like to do is I also always like to put um, a little underscore or a dash or one of my favorite symbols, a tilde, right there, okay, um, at the beginning of the name. Why do you think I would want to do something like that? What does it do when you put a symbol at the front of the file name like that? It's going to push it to the top or bottom. And it's always going to be at the top or bottom. You'll notice that my files from my camera, that's what these are, are named underscore MG. No IMG, but just underscore MG. So what's going to happen is these, this, they're all going to be grouped together. I don't want my contact sheet to be in the middle there, so I'm not going to start it with an underscore. I'm going to start it with a tilde. And then that way it's going to float to the top or the bottom. I forget where the tilde stands in the hierarchy. I, I think it'll go to the bottom. So I'm going to hit save. It's going to gather all the images that I have selected and it's going to put them into a contact sheet. Now you must have the images selected when you do this. If you don't have the images selected, it's not going to work. So now it says PDF generated successfully. Yay. Now, what I need to do now is I need to get out of the output mode so that I can go open my contact sheet. And actually, if you go scroll along here, you'll actually see it, okay? But you don't want to open it from here. You want to go back to Essentials. And I say you don't want to open it from there, not because you can't, but just because uh, it'll be um, confusing. Let's just put it that way. Now, that contact sheet kind of appears in the middle here because it's not rated, so it's at the top of the non-rated system. So now I'm going to click on it. I'm going to right click and I'm going to say open with. And here, 
I'm going to go to Preview. Preview is an Apple program that will basically open just about any file, PDFs, doc files, uh, I think it does doc files, uh, JPEGs, GIFs, anything. So I'm going to open it with Preview. If I try and open it with Adobe Acrobat, it's going to crash. So now I can take a look. Here's my three pages that I've got, 30 images, perfect, okay. Whoops. And all I'm going to do next is go File and Print from Preview. And you're not going to print to the black and white printer. You're going to print to the A02CL1. Stands for color. So I'm going to click that. Make sure it's set to US letter, yada, yada, yada. Everything should be good. It says low supplies. Don't worry about that. I will worry about that. And print. It prints my three pages, and we should hear the printer start up in a second here. It does take a little bit of time to print these. You know, they're moderately high resolution. It does, doesn't come out in five seconds. Okay, It'll, it takes a second. Plus, that printer's been off all night long, so for the first person to print to it, it takes a minute to warm it up. Actually, it has to warm up. So be patient. Don't print twice. Don't print again if it doesn't come out. It's coming. It's going to be coming out. If it hasn't shown up in a long time, let me know and I can take a look and see what's going on in the print queues. But don't just print twice because you're just going to waste ink. Okay? You'll just be getting a ton of prints and you only need to hand one in. Once you get your print, you staple it and you hand it to me. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over it and I'm going to try and start identifying certain specific images that I think are extremely successful. I will give you probably two or three or four that are the best, that I think are the best, and we can have a discussion around why I think they're the best, if you disagree with me especially. Um, we can talk about it and why, and then basically the idea is from those best images, after we have a discussion about maybe there's one that you really like and I'll take a second look at it or whatever, you're going to choose that one best photograph to hand in. How you hand it in, I'll show you later because we're not even close to that yet, but you'll hand that one best image in. Are there any questions about this process? It's pretty simple. So in review, in the bridge, you select the images that you want to make into a contact sheet. You go to output, Okay, and right now, by the way, I'm selected only on the PDF. So if I try and make another contact sheet with my PDF selected, it gets kind of funky. People do this because it treats that as one image. Okay, so now it's cramming it into that little space. People have tried to do that before. It doesn't work. So you select all the images that you want. Then you create your PDF. Make sure all this stuff is set right, U.S. paper, make sure your name is in the header, that sort of good stuff. Click Save, open it with Preview, and print it. It should take about half the time that this demo has taken because, uh, you know, I'm just trying to go over all the options, but it should really take you only about five minutes, maybe six tops. Okay? All right.